Welcome to this wedding illustration tutorial. I'm Joanna, founder of Concept Wedding Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to create this gold metal effect wedding chair using one of my Procreate chair brushes, and the same process I use to create custom wedding, wedding illustrations in my own business. In this tutorial, I'll be using an iPad, iPad Pro and Apple Stylus, Procreate version 507, brushes from my chair and basic brush sets, which are linked to in the description below. I've created a screen sized canvas and I'm using my UR Gold color palette, which you can download for free using the link below if you want to follow along with me. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new layer by tapping on the layers icon and the plus button. I'm going to select the brush I want from my chair brush set. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to select this gold from my Your Gold color palette. I'm going to increase the opacity up to 100% and the size up to 100%. And then I'm going to tap on the screen. And here you have the basic outline of your chair. Next, I'm going to go back to my layers tab. Swipe to the left and duplicate that layer. Now what I want to do on this bottom layer, I'm going to select it and I'm going to color drop a white color into the outline. And to check this happens correctly, I'm going to first just change the background color so we can see it stand out. So just select any colour in your colour palette. Go back to your Layers tab, select the bottom of the two outlines. Select a pure white colour. You can check it's pure white by selecting this Value tab here and checking the red, green and blue coat, um, numbers here are 255. And what you're going to do is tap on the circle, drag it into the screen and hold it over the area you want the colour to drop into. And you'll see that the colour's flown into the outline. Um, you can see the colour drop threshold at the top, just up here next to this blue line, is 43%. If your white colour flows into the whole of your canvas, what might the percentage might be too high. So if I, if I hold my stylus down and slide up to the right, you'll see that as the threshold percentage increases, the colour flows into more of the canvas. So just keep your stylus on the screen and make sure that colour only flows out into the areas you want. Am I going to do that again for that little bit underneath the chair? There we go. I can now change my background colour back to white. Next, what we want to do is add a new layer, tap on that layer and set it as a clipping mask. You'll see that black arrow occur there. So next, let's add some colour. I'm going to select my watercolour brush from my basic brush set. I'm going to select a gold colour. Increase that brush size and then I'm just going to sweep the brush over the whole of the chair. You don't need to be too accurate with this, just make sure it's all covered. I'm going to select this gold colour, increase the brush size, and then just sweep the brush over the whole of this chair outline. And you can see on the clipping mask, this gold colour basically only shows up where there's white in the layer below. OK, 
Okay, next I'm going to select a darker colour. Select, um, let's go for this dark brown here. I'm going to reduce the size of this brush. I'm going to reduce the opacity so it's not, um, it doesn't stand out too much. Just down to 50%. And then I'm going to assume that my light source is coming in from this top right. And so I'm going to just go over areas in this darker brown where I don't think the light would catch so much. You don't have to be too accurate with this. For now, we'll just put in colour down. And you'll see once we start using the smudge brush, how it all comes together. And you can be as quick and loose as you like, or you can spend some time on this and make it look really realistic. And this is a pressure sensitive brush, so we've got the opacity quite low at the moment. And the lighter you press, the less this is going to show up on this brush. So feel free to keep going over these layers. Now what I'm going to do is start adding some highlights. So I'm going to start just selecting some lighter colours and building up. Let's select. Let's go for this colour here. And just start adding a lighter shade to where you think this light source which is coming in from this top right would catch. Let's bring this opacity up so it stands out a little bit more. And the top of the seat would be lighter. And again, you don't need to worry about staying in the lines. Your clipping mask will allow you to just colour it on the areas and it will only show up on this chair outline. Let's add even more highlights just to make this really pop. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is select this tool here and in my basic brush set, I'm going to select the wet smudge tool. Let's increase the size up to about 5%. And then what I'm going to do, tapping and dragging my stylus along the screen, is just start smudging these darker tones with the mid-tones, mid-tones with the lighter tones. Kind of gives that smooth feel. And a good tip with this brush is to lift off the screen in between smudges. And there's two reasons for this. One is you don't want to keep smudging one colour all the way across. What you want to do is kind of tap your stylus on where you have one of the darker or lighter highlights and then just kind of smudge it, colour it in like this just so it moves a little bit, but then take your stylus off the screen and then start a new smudge. And the second reason this is good is if you make a mistake, um, a two finger tap on the screen will undo the last thing you did. Um, obviously the more you've done, the, the further that will take you back in your, your drawing. So it's better to make lots of little edits and changes to illustration, undo them, and then you can go back and 
just work on that little section again. Okay, so you can see how it's all coming together now. We're starting to get that look of light hitting this metal chair. And again, you can you can keep going over this over and over again to kind of make these highlights really stand out. But for today, I'm just going to show you this quick version. So the next thing I'm going to do is go in and select a very light kind of cream colour. I'm going to go into my basic brush set and select the shading tool. Uh, put the opacity around, let's try 60-ish percent, and the size around 12 or 13 percent. And now what I'm going to do is kind of just kind of strike across, sweep this brush across a few areas. I think I could do with the opacity a little bit higher so it stands out more. And it's just going to give that effect of this kind of metal. So just in a few places like this and then select that smudge tool. The wet smudge brush is already selected. Bring the size down. Just gives that, just smudge this into the illustration. And if you don't like some areas, just start smudging those colours together a little bit. Okay, so I'm happy with this for now. Um, I think if I was showing this to a client, I would work on these highlights a little bit more. Um, but it gives you a good example of how I'm, how I'm working through this process. So a stylistic option, if you like, is to work on this top layer here. So this outline, if I toggle this on and off, you'll see the outline just pop or hide. And you might just decide you like it on or off. Um, you might decide that you want this to stand out a little bit more and maybe go for the black outline or a darker brown outline. And an easy way to do this is to select that layer, find a colour you want to work with. I'm going to go up here to your magic wand, select recolour, and it's going to bring this crosshair up. And what you want to do is move that crosshair onto the outline it's quite fiddly, but you can see how this colour has now changed to dark brown. And then if I go back into my colour palette and select disc, as I move this around the colour palette, you'll see it be a bit picking different colours. And you can kind of work on a look you like. You know, some people like this dark outline. You might want to go with something a bit more subtle, something really different like pure white on the outside. I think I'll stick with something around there. And now what I'm going to do is group these together. I'm just going to swipe right on those three layers, select group, rename this to chair, not hair, and then I can minimise it. So a good thing with this is um, this technique you, you can use on many, many different gold chairs or really anything that has a gold metal effect. Um, so for example, here's some items that I've created using this effect. So different chairs, uh, we've got some vases here, candlesticks, really anything with this effect um, you can just pick from this colour palette, the gold colour palette, um, and you can work in areas, so you could go for a darker kind of bronzy effect up here, these kind of more golds, and then a lighter, lighter gold effect here. And then another great tip is what I would do, now we've grouped these three layers into one, um, technically, once you're happy with this chair, you never have to redo this piece of work. 
um, what I do is I have collections of pieces that I've already created. So I would swipe to the left here, duplicate it, tap on it and flatten it. And what that does is just creates the same thing, but this is on three layers and this is now on one, which is good for keeping your um, illustrations organized. And what I could do, for example, is tap on this, drag it into the screen and you'll see this green plus appear. Go into my gallery, a design that maybe I already have started and just drop it into there. Use it with this uh, arrow selected. You'll see this outline and with it set to uniform, which means as you resize it, it will stay in proportion. You could just reduce this down, see how this design looks with a chair like this. And then all you have to do is slide left, duplicate, select the arrow, move that chair to the right. And again, slide left, duplicate, move the third chair across. Same again for the fourth chair. And then you can group these together if you need to. Select on the group layer and move these around and you can resize them. So you can see how you can create this once and reuse it in different designs to show your clients. I hope this was useful for you and if you love this video, please subscribe and um, I'll see you around for another tutorial soon.